Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on the basics of the 2D carbon allotrope, graphene. In this video, I will briefly provide an introduction to the structure and properties of graphene, starting with its atomic and crystal structure, and moving on to its mechanical and electronic properties. As graphene is composed of carbon atoms, I will begin by discussing the properties of elemental carbon. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table, with six electrons surrounding its nucleus. Typically, the four electrons in carbon's outer orbitals form covalent bonds with other atoms when carbon forms compounds or is arranged in a crystal structure. Elemental carbon is the sixth most abundant element on Earth, and due to its abundance, its capacity to form diverse organic compounds, and its unusual ability to form long chains of covalent bonds, carbon serves as a common element of all known life. Carbon is stable in various multi-atomic structures, including coal, diamond, graphite, and several others I will cover later in this video. For now, let's take a closer look at a very common allotrope of carbon, graphite. Graphite is a crystalline allotrope of carbon, the most stable allotrope under standard conditions. It occurs naturally in igneous rock as well as in meteorites. The structure of graphite is best understood as a stack of weakly bonded 2D atomic lattices. Each lattice is considered a single layer, and individually the layers are referred to as graphene. Graphene layers are bonded together via van der Waals bonds, which allows for single layers to be separated rather easily under the right conditions. Famously, the first graphene layer was exfoliated from graphite by André Gaim and his colleagues at the University of Manchester using nothing other than store-bought scotch tape. Now graphene is typically synthesized from the bottom up using the Tang Lao method, which is much safer, simpler, and more environmentally friendly than exfoliation. Carbon atoms that compose graphene sheets are arranged in a hexagonal honeycomb lattice, with atoms bonded covalently together in plane. Although typically the term graphene refers to the 2D planar structure pictured here, these sheets can be shaped to form other structures, such as rolled one-dimensional carbon nanotubes and zero-dimensional hollow ball-shaped structures known as Buckminster fullerenes. These structures, more commonly referred to as buckyballs, are considered one unified molecule, C60, and get their name from Richard Buckminster Bucky Fuller, the American architect, author, and theorist who designed the first geodesic dome, which, as you can see, is very structurally similar to buckyballs. I will now briefly discuss the unique properties of graphene that make it so widely utilized in a variety of applications across many different scientific fields. Firstly, graphene is arguably the strongest material ever discovered, with a tensile strength of 130,000 megapascals and a Young's modulus of 1,050 gigapascals. Compared to steel, graphene is about 1,000 times stronger. However, this strength does not extend to graphite, as you'll notice if you've ever written with a graphite pencil. The weak van der Waals bonds between graphene layers means 3D graphite structures do not retain the properties of material strength that graphene has on its own. Secondly, graphene has the highest thermal conductivity of any material ever recorded. Due to the strength of the carbon-carbon bonds in graphene's hexagonal lattice, there is very little scattering of photons, or energy excitations, making graphene an excellent conductor of heat. Similarly, those same bonds make graphene an excellent electrical conductor, with carrier mobility as high as 200,000 centimeters squared per volt second at room temperature, with a carrier density of 10 to the 12th per centimeter squared. At low temperature, graphene's carrier mobility can jump to 500,000 centimeters squared per volt second. Thirdly, graphene shows a high chemical stability due to the strength of its in-plane bonds, although its chemical inertness decreases if there are imperfections in the crystal lattice. Graphene's inertness makes it applicable in many situations, including as an antioxidating layer around metals and metal alloys. In 2012, graphene oxide-wrapped silicon nanoparticles were used as anode materials in lithium-ion batteries and outperformed conventional graphite anodes five-fold. The last property of graphene I will discuss is its interesting bandgap structure. Without going into extreme detail, graphene is notable for being a zero bandgap semiconductor. In other words, pure graphene is metallic as there is no bandgap between the valence and conducting bands. However, 
graphene can be induced to have a band gap by a variety of methods, including classical N-type or P-type doping, hydrogenation, and by layering two sheets of graphene to form bilayer graphene. Bilayer graphene has an easily tunable band gap structure, which makes it ideal for applications in graphene-based electronic devices. I hope that you learned something from this video about graphene, and feel free to leave a comment below with any questions, comments, or criticisms you might have. Thank you for watching.